you're alone. I'm alone. Go away, please. Nobody cares. You can't succeed. You can't succeed. Quiet! No, no. I can't get rid of it. You think of that? You can never change. You can Well, good morning. It is the final week of our Castaway Summer Sermon Series. Where did the summer go? Well, it hasn't left, right? It's still with us, and it will be. But uh, welcome today. I am honored to be able to bring our final sermon of our Castaway Sermon Series that has focused on mental health. How many of you have been blessed this summer? In, in the different topics and, and how God is teaching us to win the war in our mind. Amen? And we know that's quite the battle. Well, being that this is the final week of Castaway, I wanted to give you a little heads up of what's next. And uh, first of all, I wanted to say that next week is Labor Day weekend, and uh, we have a special guest next weekend. Um, our pastors, Pastor Mike and Julie, are finishing up their 25th anniversary trip together this week. They'll be coming back later this week. But this next Sunday, we have Pastor Danny McDaniel coming back. He's one of our family favorites that comes periodically. So he'll be here next Sunday. And then two weeks from today, on September 10th, we're kicking off our new sermon series called Endgame. And this is going to be focused on the end times. How are things going to play out here on the earth? How many of you know there's a lot of confusion? There's a lot of opinions? There's a lot of uh, speculation? Oh, it's going to be like this. It's going to happen like this. Jesus himself even said there's, there's going to be those that come and say, here he is, here's a Messiah, there's a Messiah. Well, in this series, Endgame, we are going to take a look at what God's word says because Jesus himself even spoke about the day of the Lord and what's to come and having the right perspective. But we are going to really highlight what does it mean for us and what should we be focused on and how should we handle ourselves as the body of Christ as we see the end coming and as we see things changing in our world so drastically, right? So it's going to be an exciting series. We'll start that in two weeks, and Pastor Mike will be back, and he, he'll be fired up for sure. So, but today, I'm excited to be able to bring this final message and to sort of put a bow on this series this summer. This is one of our longest series we've ever done because this is actually week 11. I was counting back to when it got started in early June. 11 weeks we've been focused on our mental health, and uh, cast away. And what's interesting to me is as we think about mental health, you, if you had been noticing in our intro video each week, there's a little caption, there's a little uh, quote from a uh, U.S. Surgeon General advisory that was sent out back in early May, basically saying that there is an epidemic of isolation and loneliness that has really caused a lot of craziness in, in our thinking, in our minds. And we've seen it played out in the world around us, right? Uh, just the rise in uh, suicide, uh, the rise in just bizarre behavior that uh, is just hard to piece together. And yet, and we, and we chose this, you know, this theme, Castaway, because it came from that old uh, Tom Hanks movie from 2001 where he plays a, a guy who is stranded on a deserted island after he survives a plane crash, and he's by himself for months before finally getting rescued. And just that whole experience of being isolated and, and what it did to him mentally and he wanted, what he went through. 
And it's sort of a picture of what happens to us when we allow all that's going around in our, in our world to get us off kilter and, and to get us confused and we can easily find ourselves cast away on an island of isolation and fear and uncertainty. And God's word does not want us to live there, amen? We are to have a sound mind. And we've also, we also have used a, an amazing book. And if you're, if you're new with us, uh, we have also used a book called Winning the War in Your Mind by Pastor Craig Groeschel. It is worth picking up if you've never read it or not familiar with it. Winning the War in Your Mind. It's a great book that gets us focused on what God's Word says about taking captive every thought and how we can see, we can have our mind renewed and transformed. Amen? And how much we need that today. So on this final sermon, I was praying and thinking, what, what is the best topic? What, what should we focus on as we move into the fall and leave this summer sermon series behind? I was thinking about what's the key? What's the key to maintaining a sound mind once we've experienced God bring deliverance? Maybe you felt like this summer there's been some topics and, and some things that you feel like have come to light and you feel like you're, you're, you're getting some victory, right? But how do we maintain it? How, how do we walk with a sound mind into the future, right? Especially when we see the world what I would say is getting crazier and crazier. How can we stand out with the love of Jesus, have the light and a sound mind in the world as we see things unfold? Well, I have no doubt, I feel like God made it very clear that the word and the topic for this final sermon of Castaway is courage. More than ever, we need courage. We need the strength to go straight in to whatever God puts before us and have a sound mind. Because that is what's going to set us apart. That's what's going to get your coworkers and your other family members and whoever you have within your sphere of influence. What's going to get attention? It's you having a sound mind when everybody else seems to be losing theirs. I think courage is the key. When you, uh, let's talk about courage for a second before we turn to God's word. Courage is the choice and willingness to confront agony, pain, danger, uncertainty, and intimidation. Valor is courage or ba- bravery, especially in battle. Physical courage is bravery in the face of physical pain, hardship, even death, or threat of death, while moral courage is the ability to act rightly in the face of popular opposition, shame, scandal, discouragement, or personal loss. And I found that one definition I thought was worth noting, that courage is actually a state of mind, a state or a frame of mind. And I, I like the word frame of mind because we had talked earlier this summer about reframing and pre-framing, right, your perspective. Courage is a perspective that we can develop and have. And I I also found some, uh, I felt like, inspiring quotes uh, that I wanted to share real quick. And so I'm going to show a couple of these on the screen. The first one's from uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, who said, Courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the assessment that something else is, is more important than fear. Another quote I liked was, you can choose courage or you can choose comfort, but you cannot choose both. We need a lot more courage than comfort. Winston Churchill once said, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Sometimes that's even more courageous to close your mouth and hear what somebody else has to say. And then last, I I like this one from Theodore Roosevelt, who said, courage is not having the strength to go on. It is going on when you don't have the strength. 
And today, this is what I want to get at. You know, when we talk about courage, you know, it can sound very much like a motivational speech. Come on, let's be courageous, you know, and let's get positive and, and uh, rah. You say, yeah, easy for you to say you're not in my shoes, right? You're not facing what I'm facing. But this isn't just about a positive attitude. This isn't just about, you know, looking at things differently. This is about where do we find the strength to face head on what's coming our way or what, what we're dealing with and situations we're having to encounter. Well, I think we can find answers in God's word today. So I want to ask you to turn to Joshua chapter 1 with me. Joshua chapter 1. We're going to read the first nine verses. I'm reading out of the New International Version. And this is how it reads. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, who was Moses' aid, quote, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Verse 7, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always in, on your lips. Meditate on it day and night and so that you will be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Verse 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. See, today what I want to do is I want to talk about two words, two choices that are at play behind courage. That wherever we see courage, and we see it all through the Bible, and we see it even amongst each other at times. But when there is true courage being displayed, there are two choices that are underneath the surface. Two choices that lead to courage. And I want to highlight that today, and then I want to finish by talking to you about what I'm learning about this even this month. Because uh, God is always at work teaching us stuff. And uh, this, is, this is very close to home for me right now. So let's pray, and we'll get started. Lord, thank you for this opportunity today to give focus to your word. Speak to us about courage. Speak to us, Lord, about our own situations and how you are calling us to be strong and very courageous in the times that we live, in the circumstances that we face. I pray today, Lord, open our eyes. I pray for the discouraged, the disheartened, the weary here among us. Lord, I can relate. Lord, I pray that today we would be infused by your spirit. We would take heart. We would be of good cheer, Lord, today knowing that you are our source of courage, that it's not something that we must or need to conjure up ourselves because we know we don't have what it takes. Help us, O oh Lord, today. Lord, we want to walk in a sound mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know everything to, to know about overcoming mental health issues. I don't think anybody knows everything. 
about overcoming mental health issues. I'm not sure all the details about how to overcome chains of depression, anxiety, trauma, fear, unforgiveness. But one thing I do know is that it takes courage to defeat the giants in our lives. It takes courage. But where does this come from? How do we get the strength? Where does the resolve come from to be courageous? You know, Joshua is there and God says, hey, Moses is dead. <laughs> now get up and be strong and courageous. Can you imagine being in Joshua's shoes? Yeah, okay, Lord, be strong and courageous. What does that look like? But when you look at the stories in Scripture and you see Joshua leading with courage, you know, we see Gideon leading with courage those 300 warriors against millions of Midianites. You know, we, we see the courage of Queen Esther displayed when she, take, she risks her life and goes before the king uninvited. We see a shepherd boy, David, acting with courage as he conquers Goliath. We see the apostles in the book of Acts over and over displaying courage as they stand up against persecution and they face it and they, they declare the gospel. You think of Stephen, who in the face of being executed, he declares the good news and asks God to forgive them. And ultimately, the most important display was in Jesus and the courage he displayed in going to the cross for things he never did. Going to the cross. And sometimes we don't think of Jesus acting courageously because we think, well, he's God. What courage is there? Remember, he was just as much human as he was God. You got to remember that he faced a moment in the garden where he was like, I'd rather just find another way, Father. But he displayed courage, and he laid down his life. You see, as I started praying and, and looking closer at this in Scripture, all of these displays of courage, when you look behind the scenes, underneath this bravery, what you find, their strength is activated by humility and surrender. Two words that, in and of themselves, don't inspire thoughts of strength and bravery. True. Humility, you know, it's like stepping back so that you could prefer others, you know. And surrender, that seems like the opposite of courage. You know, courage is overcoming the enemy. Surrender sounds like, I'm done, I'll back off, and yet... I believe what we find in Scripture, like so often, it is almost an upside-down king. It seems backwards, and yet strength comes through weakness. Ever heard that before? When I am weak, then I am strong. I think there's something here for us today. And so I want to talk about these two choices, and make sure you get that. These are decisions we make. It's a choice to be humble. Well, I take that back. You can be humbled. Have you ever been humbled? That's a little bit different. Actually, what the scripture says is that when we humble ourselves, that's when God's favor and grace comes in. Amen? Right. So we're going to talk about humility first. Humility is the opposite of pride and arrogance. And I want to start with looking at Romans 1. If you would find Romans 1 with me, uh, it'll be on the screen as well. But I want to highlight three verses. We're not going to take the time to, to develop the context. I encourage you to read all of uh, Romans chapter 1. But we're going to highlight a few verses that talk about the opposite, of, the opposite of humility and what happens. What happens when we choose pride rather than humility? And in Romans 1, I want to highlight verses 21, 22, and 28. For although they knew God, speaking of humanity and, and 
the wickedness of people. Although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Do you see this being played out in the world around us right now? How we are watching unfold before our eyes, Romans chapter 1, as the world turns their back on the knowledge of God and says, no, actually we're God. And so we are experiencing a world of futile and foolish thinking. And then in verse 28, it says, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. Have you ever listened to what's going on in our world today and in even in our own American society? And you, you ask yourself, how, how do right-minded people get this conclusion? How, how do we get to the place where we're saying what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right? It is because we are finding ourselves in a world where they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind. See, Unless we realize the value and the priority of humility, we are headed down a path of continued mental illness, mental breakdown, and thinking that is upside down. Amen? We, if we are going to walk in a sound mind and shine the light of Jesus, if we're going to live courageously in the world that we're in now and the world as it develops as we move towards 2024, it is going to take us understanding how important humility is, how important it is for us to be humble. And let's see the greatest example and definition of humility by turning to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And read verses 3 through 8. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interest, <clears throat> but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus humbled himself. That's... This is the first step to being courageous, is humbling ourselves, saying, you know what, I don't have all the answers, or not only do I not have all the answers, but I am going to actually prefer others and think of others before myself. It's the contrast to pride. It's the contrast of, no, I have the answers, I'll decide, you answer to me. And we're seeing what that does in our world. James chapter 4, the other verse I want to highlight regarding humility. James chapter 4, verses 6 through 10. But he gave us more grace. That is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Amen. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself. This idea of humility is the whole reason Satan got cast out of heaven, because he was prideful. 
He said, I think I would rather be worshipped. And it was the beginning of the end. <laughs> God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. When I think of courage, I think of the courage of first responders. When I think of pictures and images of, of courage, oftentimes I think of all of those firemen and all those police officers that were rushing into the World Trade Center towers on 9-11. Rushing into a crumbling, burning building. That was courageous. That was looking at a very risky, life-threatening situation and rushing in. Why? Because they considered the needs of others before themselves. Amen? Yes. Courage underneath has humility. Secondly, surrender. The act of giving up, yielding, or relinquishing control, authority, or possession of something. Pastor Cruz, Wilson, please. This is a, a replica that we put together for one of the parts of this movie, the Tom Hanks movie, Castaway, while he was stranded on this deserted island, uh, part of the, the plane wreckage that he found on the beach was a volleyball. And if you haven't seen this movie, what became this little face was actually because he cut himself in just the process of what was going on, and he got angry, and he picked up the volleyball and, and threw it, and the blood from his hand is what created this. And he began a relationship with Wilson, and it's called Wilson because it, was a, it had Wilson on it. It was a Wilson volleyball. And Wilson sort of represented his mind, his mind during this time of isolation. And for us this summer, as we have been going through this castaway series, this has represented those things that we battle in our mind. It represents the isolation. It, maybe it represents the trauma that we've been through. Maybe it represents the anxiety, or maybe it's the unforgiveness because of something that was done to us at some point. It, it can mean anything. It, is, it represents what stands between us and a sound mind. It's what stands between us and experiencing the freedom that Jesus provides. Amen? Amen? And so surrender is crucial because it's the act of giving up. And what is so strange, and we all have seen this and experienced it maybe at different degrees... Sometimes when we have gone through trauma or we've gone through painful things or we have, in our minds, we're angry about this or that, it's like, it's like something that we hang on to and it becomes ours. And we don't want to give up. We don't want to yield it. And yet, it's the very thing that holds us back. And even last week, Pastor Tim was up here talking about uh, his own journey of overcoming trauma and how there's a point at which we have to bring whatever we are battling. We have to bring whatever has been hurting us. We have to bring whatever it is and give it to Jesus. That our freedom, that our mental health is about us giving up. And not holding on. But surrender doesn't happen unless we realize that we need to trust God. And it takes me back to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. One of the first Bible verses I ever memorized as a child growing up in church. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths, or he will make your paths straight. We're not surrendering if we don't trust. 
And sometimes that's the, that's the kicker. That's the, that's the issue we have. I don't understand. Can I just give you a, a news flash? We're never going to fully understand. So, so give up. <laughs> Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. The book of Proverbs talks about that God wants to provide understanding for us. But there's a difference between the understanding that God wants to provide and the wisdom he wants to provide. And then there's the understanding that says, you answer to me. And until I understand the way I want to understand, then I'm still calling the shots. And that's what we do. We set ourselves up as God when we tell him that I don't really understand what you're doing, so until I do, I'm going to withhold. But that stands between us and living courageously. That is what stands in the way. We have got to let go, yield, relinquish control. So my question for you today on this final Sunday of Castaway What's keeping you on your island? What's, what are you still holding on to that is a symbol of your control? It can even be your pain. Sometimes we have a codependent relationship with our own trauma, yeah. our depression, our anxiety, the unforgiveness that we are withholding, somehow feeling like we have the right Well, we do have the right. We have the right to destroy our own lives. We have the right to live in mental disorder. And that's the direction we're going until we surrender. If you've ever seen the J.R.R. Tolkien or read the book, the, the trilogy, The Lord of the Rings, there is an amazing character and picture of this very principle I'm talking about in the character Gollum. It's this unassuming little creature who was originally named Smeagol who happens to find a ring that was the ring of power in that story in Middle Earth. And he begins to develop this relationship with this ring. And through this trilogy, you see Smeagol go from being an innocent creature to becoming a hideous, deformed, almost looking un, just like a, an animal that became known as Gollum because he was hanging on to this ring and called it, my precious, <laughs> my precious. And that's a picture of humanity. And here we are in 2023... And we, we look at that story, maybe watch that movie, and we, we sort of chuckle at it. And yet it is a picture of human nature. That we are hanging on to the very thing that's destroying us, and we're thinking that we're in charge. And today I want to challenge us that if we're to walk forward, and, and if we're to have a sound mind as we look into the years ahead until Jesus comes back, it's going to be because we have learned what it means to walk in humility and to live continually in surrender. Surrender to him and surrender our understanding and surrender our pain. Surrender, you just fill in the blank. Surrender your finances to him. Surrender your marriage to him. Surrender every part of who you are because that's the only right answer in response to what Jesus did for us. And so if you're here today and you have never made Jesus Lord of your life, if you have never fully surrendered to him, if you've never done that, then I have no hope for you. There is no hope for you until we come to the place to completely surrender and yield to Jesus and say, Jesus, thank you 
for going to the cross in my place. Thank you for paying for my sin that I could never. Thank you for loving me. I receive you. I give you my life, and I receive yours. That's the most amazing exchange there ever is. But here is the next step. You may have done that. I know many of us in here, we have done that. We have said, Jesus, I give you my life. And then we start living, and then we start taking it back. Then we start experiencing life and deciding, I'm going to figure this out on my own. And then we pray about stuff, and we don't see our prayers answered the way we would like or in the timeline we want, or situations go the wrong way. We pray one thing, and the opposite happens. And we start seeing this, and we start thinking too much, and we start deciding that I'm going to sort of pull back a little bit here, and I'm going to start figuring some stuff out because I get hurt when I surrender. But I'm here today to encourage us that the only way to go forward in a sound mind, the only way to live courageously, is if we will live a lifestyle of surrender. A lifestyle of surrender. That's the biggest challenge in our world today. Nobody wants to surrender. I'm the boss. You see, humility and surrender activate Holy Spirit courage. Are you lacking courage today? Are you fearful? You feel like you have no strength? Well, that's probably a good assessment. The answer is to humble ourselves before the Lord, surrender to Him, and to experience the refreshing of His Spirit to bring the courage to go forward. So I want to end by talking for a minute about what I've been learning even here in the last month. Some of you know, and some of you don't, because if you're pretty new, you probably haven't heard this, but this month, I became a grandfather. Yep. And on August 5th, Luke Nathaniel Sample was born to my son and daughter-in-law in New Orleans. So he's 22 days old. I have yet to hold him. Oh. But it will be soon. So exciting. Six days after he was born. So mind you, they're in New Orleans, right? Saying, Lord, bring him home. Do something, you know, we'd love to have family close. Six days after Luke is born, my son calls me and says, Dad, I got a job offer in Gilbert. <laughs> what? What? <clears throat> and so they're moving back, like in three weeks. They're going to live here. So thankful, right? Thank you, Lord. You know, that's awesome. At the very same time, this month. So th this has been a great month in that part. How many of you know there's always a bunch of stuff mixed into life? Well, I, at the same time, many of you know the journey that we're on, Kelly and I and our family, of caring for my wife's mother, Patty, who was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2020. And she lived with us for over two and a half years. She now lives in, a, in an assisted living. Um, the cancer is not spread, but at 87, she's also battling dementia. And it is, it is a journey that we, I didn't anticipate this. I should have, I suppose, but, you know, I was thinking empty nest, woohoo! And now it's care for mom. And many of you are walking similar paths. It's, it's life. But I'm bringing this up here at the end of this message because I am realizing that in myself, I am not very courageous. I'm actually pretty selfish. And I want to I wanna bring this home because I know that you know, in all our situations, that this, 
this pops up in, in our human nature and the challenge we have, and it affects our mind and how we think. But in this very month where our grandson's born and now they're, they're moving back and we're excited, at the very same time, after all this journey of caring for mom, and, and feeling like, oh, Lord, you know, Lord, we've done a good job. Thank you for bringing us, you know, we're praying that, the, that things settle down and, you know, all of that. Man, it just, the journey just continues. This month, like in these last two weeks, since finding out that we have a grandson, we're excited. My mother-in-law breaks both of her hips on separate things. She has hip replacement surgery on one, Yesterday morning, she has surgery on the other hip and has some pins put in. Kelly, right now, is with her at the hospital at the moment to, to see her. And I'm saying this to say, me, yes, Pastor Kevin, I am in my mind thinking, Lord, how long is this, how long is this going to keep, how, how many more things can go wrong? In, in our care for Patty. How, haven't we been serving, isn't, you know, three and a half years, isn't, isn't, this, isn't this adequate for we're passing the test of persevering and caring and, and being patient? And I, I feel this in the back. This is how I feel. It's like, how much more? Wednesday night, this past Wednesday, midweek free fresh night, we get a call, and it's when she broke the second hip. And so I'm at the hospital Wednesday night with my wife at the side of, of mom, and I am frustrated. And I'm pacing around. I'm walking out in the hall. I'm going down to the nurse's station, and I'm sort of irritated because I feel like the, the staff is not you know, communicating well enough, or it's like, come on, I, we've been here for three hours, and, and you know, I've got other, I got, you know, tomorrow, you know, all this stuff, what's going on? I'm being selfish, and I'm thinking, hmm, Lord, aren't you, you should be doing this different, or right? something should be changed here. I'm just uh, talking about the fact that every day, we have opportunities to decide how we're going to handle situations. And I wrote a couple things. Here's what I wrote down. I've got the joy of my grandson's birth. I've got the sorrow of caring for my mother-in-law and all that she's going through and how it's affecting my wife. And my mindset, how I am viewing this, the script... Remember we talked about flipping the script. The script in my mind, my perspective, determines whether I will be cast away on the island of frustration and anger and a bad attitude and selfish, or I will choose humility and surrender, activating courage to overcome and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit with a sound mind. We all have a choice of how we're going to respond to what comes our way. I had to apologize to my wife Wednesday night. We got back to the house about 1030. And I wasn't angry at my wife, but she was sitting there with me. She was feeling my irritation. And I had, to, I had to repent to my wife. I had to humble myself. And before the Lord, I had to surrender my expectation of how things are supposed to be playing out. Feeling like, Lord, you know I've sacrificed enough so far in all this process. So, as we come to this close of this message... My question for you is, will you choose humility and surrender today? Are you fearful? Are you isolated in your own mind? Are you angry? Are you hurt? Whatever you're holding on to, 
your breakthrough, your healing, your strength, the courage you need to overcome and live in victory is on the other side of humility and surrender. So what are you going to decide today? How are you going to respond to what the Lord's speaking to you? He has all the strength you need. He loves you and he cares about you. And guess what Joshua 1 said? We read it. You know why we can be strong and courageous? Is because he said, I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen? So let's go. Let's go into the fall of 2023. Let's look into the unknown of 2024 and a presidential election year. Holy smokes, we, we know what those can get like. We can go into this and we can walk with courage that will impact those around us if we will simply say to Jesus, not by my will, yours be done. I surrender. So would you close your eyes? We're going to close in prayer. Lord, I pray in this moment, speak to each one of us about those places where you're reminding us that we've been stingy, we've been selfish, we've been stubborn, we've been prideful. I pray in this moment, Lord, that you would stir us by your spirit. Give us the courage. We need courage from you, Lord, that we would humble ourselves and we would surrender. In a moment, the prayer ministry team will be here at the front, and I want to encourage you if you need to make Jesus Lord of your life, that's the first step of surrender. That's the first step into a life of courage. Please don't kid yourself. If you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, you were not born again. It, it, being born again, being made new, knowing that you are in Christ starts with a complete surrender to him. Come and pray with one of our ministry team members to do that. And if you realize today that there's things that you need to surrender in order to walk in the courage you need right now, I want to encourage you to take a moment today as well to come forward for prayer. Lord, I ask, Holy Spirit, take this word, take Joshua chapter 1, I pray, God, that you would speak to each one of us where it matters, where, it, where you intended, and encourage us, Lord, that you're for us, you're not against us, that on the other side of surrender is the freedom we all crave, the freedom we all need, the courage and the strength to go on. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, transform us by the renewing of our mind. Lord, we no longer want to go back to the island of isolation and fear and bondage. We want to break free by the power of the Holy Spirit and then humble ourselves and surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us for service today. Excited to have you. And remember, you matter to us and you matter to God. And because you matter to us, we want to connect with you. So please be sure to fill out a connect card and let us know how we can be praying for you this week. And we'll see you here next week. Now check out these announcements.
be a powerful night where we gather and we're going to spend time in the presence of God at his feet, hearing from Jesus. He is going to speak to us and minister to us on this night. If you would like to give, we invite you to give through the Bethel app, available through your app store. Whether new to Bethel or one of our members, we want you to know that we are all about relationship. So connect with us. Press connect and let us know how you're doing. And if you need prayer, well, we can pray for you. Press pray with us and one of our ministry staff will take on your prayer request. Digitally challenged? Well, don't worry. We have gift envelopes and connect cards located in the seat back in front of you. And if you are connecting with us online, simply download the Bethel app or visit our website at www.bethelchandler.com. To find out more about what's happening here at Bethel, register for events, or listen to the latest sermon, download the Bethel app or visit our website at www.bethelchandler.com.